During my years in elementary school, we practiced for the threat of the atom bomb with a drill that began when we heard the voice of the principal over the scratchy intercom say, duck and cover. Without questioning the procedure, we knelt beneath our desks with our hands covering our heads. During those years, films were being shown to students of all ages warning about the threat of nuclear attack, describing the dangers of radioactive fallout and demonstrating methods of preparation and protection. Years later, at a confirmation service, I listened to the minister preach a sermon in which he compared the work of the Holy Spirit to the radioactive fallout from Chernobyl. I was tempted to leap to my feet and yell something like, duck and cover. Instead, I sat quietly. And years later, I made this cine poem using the title of that sermon, Spiritual Fallout. It has happened a few times, enough times actually, so that he worries about it. Sometimes during the prayer of the day or the reading of the lesson, often during the sermon, usually when the congregation is seated, always when it's fairly quiet. When it happens, he digs his fingers into the cushioned pew or the green cover of the hymnal pushes a fingernail into the gold outline of the cross on the cover, deep enough to leave an indentation, a rut, then follows the line around and around, digging deeper into the crease of the cross until the urge is gone. But he knows it will return, and he is never sure when. Maybe next Sunday he will do it. Next Sunday, perhaps, as the preacher stands before the congregation, the front pews filled with confirmands in white robes and red carnations, as he rattles through a sermon about the Holy Spirit, trying to explain how the Holy Spirit is just like the radioactive fallout from Chernobyl, unseen, powerful. The preacher is quite serious, but he doesn't realize what he is saying. The congregation doesn't realize. The confirmands are quietly peeling the wrapping paper from the gifts they were given earlier in the service and one by one are finding small commemorative dinner plates left over from the 50th anniversary of the church celebrated five years earlier. They don't know that Chernobyl means wormwood, the plant of bitterness, the blazing star from heaven that poisoned a third of all the earth's water, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that rose from reactor number four in a cloud three miles high. The Holy Spirit of plutonium still inside the cracking tomb of reactor number four. The Holy Spirit of exposure. The Holy Spirit of radioactive milk. The Holy Spirit of leukemia and tumor the Holy Spirit of Belarusian children. He squirms and squeezes the front edge of the cushioned pew. He might do it now. Jump to his feet and yell something like, hogwash, or something really stupid like, everybody duck, or break into the first verse of that Hank Williams song. Can't you hear the lonesome whipper will? Before two deacons and the church custodians spring onto him faster than anyone dared to spring a few weeks earlier, when the man in the pew that the sun hits hard stiffened and pitched forward during the sermon, 
It sounds too blue to fly. And while they try to quiet him, the preacher covers the microphone with his right hand to keep the outburst muffled from the radio audience, from those who stare beyond the kitchen window to the muddy ruts in the driveway, from those who listen at an open window for the cry of a lone eagle. I could cry.